and welcome. My name is Kathleen Cummings. I direct the Kushwa Center for the Study of American Catholicism, and I'm a faculty member of the Department of American Studies here at Notre Dame. This afternoon's lecture is sponsored by the Kushwa Center, the Program in Religion and Literature, and the Department of English, and we're very pleased to welcome Ron Hansen back to Notre Dame this weekend. Ron will be joining tomorrow's Kushwa Center Seminar on American Religion as a commentator on Dr. Paula Kane's new book, Sister Thorne and Catholic Mysticism in Modern America. If you'd like to hear more from Ron after today, uh, please join us tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. in McKenna Hall. But first things first, this afternoon Ron is with us to reflect on being a Catholic writer. Ron is both Jesuit educated and perhaps we might say a Jesuit educator. Um, he graduated from Creighton Prep and earned his BA in English at Creighton University in his native Omaha. And for the last 18 years has taught creative writing, English, and film studies at Santa Clara University where he holds the Gerard Manley Hopkins SJ Chair in Arts and Humanities. And we're pretty sure that Ron brought that, brought that Northern California weather here to us. Um, <laughs> out of character, which is what we're used to having here in South Bend. Ron earned his MFA from the University of Iowa's prestigious Writers for Iowa, Iowa's Writers Workshop, and he also received a Master of Arts in Spirituality at Santa Clara. At Stanford University, Ron held a Wallace Stegner Creative Writing Fellowship. He has received fellowships from the Michigan Society of Fellows, the National Endowment for the Arts, the Guggenheim Foundation, and the Lyndhurst Foundation, and was presented with an award in literature from the American Academy and Institute of Arts and Letters. Ron has published nine novels, two collections of short stories, one children's book, and a book of essays. He has twice been a finalist for the Penn Faulkner Award for Fiction. He was also a finalist for the National Book Award for his 1996 novel, Atticus. Ron's range as a novelist is truly remarkable. His 1991 <coughs> novel, Mariette in Ecstasy, probes the spiritual life of an American nun who receives the stigmata. I uh, taught that book many times, most recently, in my Sanctity and Society seminar, and um, it's always a wonderful book to teach, and I know some others in the room have taught it as well. Um, breaking news, according to Facebook, um, Mariette was recently named on the publisher, uh, on a list published by Publishers Weekly as one of the 10 best historical novels ever. So Ron didn't know that. <laughs> um, Ron also wrote Hitler's Niece, depicting the family life of Adolf Hitler against the backdrop of his terrifying rise to power. Ron's most recent novel, A Wild Surge of Guilty Passion, 2011, is set in New York City during the Warring Twenties. Yet, from the beginning, a preferred setting of Ron's fiction has been the American West. One of his earliest novels, The Assassination of Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford, 1983, was the subject of wide critical acclaim and was later adapted for the 2007 film of the same name, directed by Andrew Dominic and starring Brad Pitt. And I'm pretty sure this is the first time the name Brad Pitt has ever appeared in a Christmas Center introduction. <laughs> Ron has visited Notre Dame many times over the years, but he last came under the auspices of the Kushwa Center in 2001, shortly after the publication of his wonderful collection of essays on faith and fiction, titled A Stay Against Confusion. The essays cover a broad range of Catholic subjects, including the Eucharist, St. Ignatius of Loyola, the sacramentality of writing, the poetry of Gerard Manley Hopkins, and the Jesuit martyrs of El Salvador. In 2007, Ron was ordained a permanent deacon for the Diocese of San Jose in California, and has since served both in parish life and in campus ministry. In 2009, he was inducted into the College of Fellows at the Dominican School of Philosophy and Theology in Berkeley, California. The mission of the Krishwa Center is to bring scholars together from across academic disciplines to interpret the American Catholic experience, and Ron Hansen offers a unique contribution to that project today as he shares with us some of his insights on the Catholic life and imagination that informs his writing as a spiritual exercise in seeing into the middle of things. Please join me in welcoming Ron Hansen. Thank you all for being here. I'm going to turn on this microphone. It's a thrill to be back. Um, although I called this on seeing into the middle of things on being a Catholic writer, I think it actually applies to everybody who has any kind of religious impulse. And you'll see that as I go along. Seeing into the middle of things. I have taken as my impetus for this talk four quotations from the essay Attention and Will by the great French philosopher Simone Ville. She wrote, Attention, taken to its highest degree, is the same thing as prayer. It presupposes faith and love. 
She wrote, extreme attention is what constitutes the creative faculty in us. And the only extreme attention is religious. She wrote, the attention turned with love towards God, or in a lesser degree towards anything which is truly beautiful, makes certain things impossible for us. Such is the non-acting action of prayer in the soul. She wrote, the highest ecstasy is the attention at its fullest. I hesitate to try to explain those quotations, for they seem to me to function as koans, or parables that ought to be left alone to the stress of meditation. But I would like to at least linger a while in the proximity of Simone Biel's concept of attention, which she seems to describe both as seen and as an expectant form of waiting. I've taken the title for this talk from the Mayan word for shaman, which is Nikuachanel, or he who sees into the middle of things. And it seems to me that is the gift or desire of most of us here, to see into the middle of things. I just completed teaching a parish Bible study class on the epistles of St. Paul. So I've had the opportunity to read once again his gorgeously rhetorical encouragement to the Christians in Corinth, in which he wrote, When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I understood like a child, I thought like a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then we shall see face to face. Now I know only in part, but then shall I know fully, even as I have been fully known. To know fully, even as we have been fully known. A friend who's a psychotherapist once told me she thought the foremost reason that people marry was not loneliness or lust or security. Rather, they yearn to be fully known by a husband or wife and to share in the intimate gift of fully knowing another. We seek a deep and perceptive insight into ourselves that we can only get through intimacy with another. We read fictional narratives and memoirs for just that reason too. For now, as St. Paul wrote, we see through a glass darkly. We have in front of us guises, personae, and outward appearances. We yearn for the secret life of our times. We yearn to see face to face. Wondering about that gerund scene, I researched the physiology of sight and found that only in the most limited way do our eyes function like cameras. Right behind the iris and pupil is a lens that focuses images upside down onto the retina at the rear of the eye. There is the equivalent of an exposure setting at work so that we can find, we can note fine details in enough sun, sunshine and at night gradually adjust to the darkness and fuzzily recognize shapes but not in color. Like cameras, we can change the focal length of the lenses by squeezing or widening the internal optics. We have no shutters, of course. <clears throat> we do not lock onto an image. We scan it. Even when we presume we're staring and the image is fixed, we're actually shifting our 